What's up? My name is Dr. Alex Draley. I'm going to teach you not only how to stretch your pecs, but why you should do it too. How many people sit like this on a daily basis? If you're one of the 80 million people in school all day, or part of the 86% of adults who sit behind a desk, you probably do. And nearly 90% of us go home and either watch TV, read a book, or eat in a seated position. So really, we're spending most of our day sitting down. Now what does sitting have to do with the pecs? So when we're sitting at school, or behind a computer, or reading or eating, we're generally slouched, our arms are forward, and slightly internal rotated. What this is doing day after day is tightening up the pec. So a good portion of my audience are powerlifters. So for all you men and women, how often are you flexing your arms and internally rotating, such as a bench? Or are you internally rotating your arms and adducting them a bit, such as a deadlift? probably a few days a week. Have you ever gotten to the bottom of a bench and it just feels really tight but not in a good way? Or have you ever reached back for your seatbelt and realized you can't quite reach it? Go ahead and give your chest a little bit of pressure. Is that kind of tender? You probably have tight pecs. So the role of the pectoralis is to internally rotate, flex the arm, and adduct. So when you find a position that does the opposite, externally rotate, abduct, and extend. There's your position. All right, so my favorite stretch to free up the pec is a corner pec stretch. Now, because I'm trying to record this, I'm not going to do it against the corner, but against the wall. I'll still show you how to do the corner, but just for demonstration purposes, and so we're actually looking at each other, I'm going to do it against this wall here. So, as we mentioned, we need the arm in external rotation, abduction, and a little bit of extension. Get in this position here, line up against the wall, and lean forward. So you should feel it through the chest here, not the anterior shoulder. What happens all day when we're in this position, the anterior capsule of shoulders are already being stretched. So a lot of times when people get in here and they really feel it this way, all they're doing is stretching that anterior capsule. Block your elbow with this wall or the corner and lean into it. You should feel it here, like I said. Now you can't see my feet right now, but I am in staggered stance. We don't want to be our feet together because in order to lean forward, we end up just extending our low back. So we're trading one thing for another and that's not good. So stagger stance, elbow back, lean into it. It should be a four to six intensity out of 10. You don't wanna crank on this. When we are sitting here cranking on it, our Golgi tendon organs are actually reflexing back against us. What this means is they're fighting because they don't like that tension. It's really hard to stretch something when it's fighting against you. So we need to do it just nice and easy. The Golgi tendon organs can relax and you can get a good stretch. You want to hold it here for 15 to 30 seconds. Don't hold your breath. That's just going to increase the tension and make the stretch worse. All right, so to do it against the corner, face it directly and keep your feet staggered stance. You're going to put your palms on the wall, elbows forward, and lean into it. Again, feel it in your chest, not in your shoulders. 15 to 30 seconds, gentle to moderate stretch. Again, cannot stress that enough. Do not just crank on this. It's not going to feel good, and it's not going to be helpful. Real quick, go down there, hit the like button. Thanks. So if you don't have a corner at home or at the gym to stretch against, you can always use a rack. Now for me, using a rack is probably a step below using the corner, and I'll show you why here. When we come up against it and we try to block her elbow like we do on the wall, we're not getting any external rotation coming back this way. So external rotation is one way to stretch a pec since the pec is an internal rotator. So what we can do in this way is block part of your forearm and let the elbow come forward. But for me, I just don't feel as safe and secure in this position as I did against the corner. So you can still do a pec stretch in a doorway. It's probably my third option though. I find a lot of times when people get to the doorway, their elbows are cocked back and really they're just stressing the shoulder, which again is not what we want to happen. All right, so one of the things we need to address is what happens if you get some numbness, some tingling, or like the sensation that your arm is falling asleep. Well, first of all, let's make sure that your form is correct. Secondly, that's a nerve issue. So we have this big group of nerves called the brachial plexus that runs from the neck down through the arm. So when we're cranking in this position, it's very likely that you could aggravate some of those nerves. Nerves actually get irritated pretty easily in relative to those other tissues. So if you are finding that you're having that sensation, back off a little bit. So we talked about how to stretch the pec, but we haven't talked about when to stretch it. So studies have shown if you do a static stretch before any type of movement, it's actually going to decrease the output you can produce. Reason is when we stretch, we're inhibiting the muscle a little bit. So if you're going to do this before you bench, get on the bench and do the bar for 40, 50 times. 
really trying to warm up and wake up that muscle again. You could alternatively do this in the morning, anytime throughout the day, just not immediately before you work out and you'll be okay. We'll be really missing the mark, really talk about how to stretch it and not how to reinforce that new movement. It's just like when you learn something in school, you can't just learn it one time and you remember it forever, you have to reinforce it. So first we stretch, we mobilize, we get more range of motion. And then from there, we utilize that new range of motion so our body can remember it and help stay freed up. So we just worked on essentially opening up the chest. One good reinforcement then is to do what I call chest pops, where you're popping your chest up. Now if you do this standing, it's very easy to use your low back to extend. What really needs to come just from the chest and work on opening up. You can get a little bit of shoulder involvement and kind of press back as well. But essentially we're trying to get in a better posture. Another good exercise is to do a scapular Y, either in standing or in prone, which is on your stomach. In these movements, especially in prone, you're really activating your lower trap, which is one of the muscles responsible for pulling your scapulas down. Now when we sit like this all day, our scapulas are pulled up, so activating the lower trap will help pull you into that good position. Hope you learned something. Remember, live safely, stay strong. I'll catch you on the next one. If you have problems with your squat twisting, click on the video above. Hit that logo so you can subscribe.